Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to go over round 3 game from Zagreb, uh, from Zagreb Open. So, round 2 was played in the morning of the second day of the tournament and usually in Croatia most 9 round Swiss tournaments have a double round on day 2. So, this game round 3 was played in the afternoon, which means that you normally have almost no time to prepare and uh, round 1 games started at 10 and then round 2 was I think at 5 but most games finished at around 2 or 3 p.m. so you only have a couple of hours now in between games I did manage to come home and have something to eat to rest uh, and when the pairings got out found out that I was playing at 2180 so uh, an opponent rated 250 points higher than me uh, and I started preparing, I, I applied one principle which I've been sticking to for the last few months and that's do not prepare the openings you play or do not stick to what you know best but rather try to find the weakness in your opponent's repertoire and play against that. So that's what I tried to do. I had a look at around 50 of my opponent's games briefly in the hour or so I had to prepare and I found one weakness. Now, uh, I was lucky enough to get the weakness on the board, uh, a mistake he'd already made in one game, he repeated it. So he usually opens with d4, and as you may know, I usually play d5, but since the mistake my opponent uh, made once comes after knight f6, I decided to play knight f6. And here he goes for bishop f4, which is an attempt at the London system, or the Sarat attack, or whatever. Uh, and after bishop f4, uh, I would normally, again, uh, play the move d5 uh, against London system setups, and after e3 I would play c5, uh, but I'd prepared c5 immediately. And this is a move I'm familiar with because the most likely scenario is a Benoni-type structure, or a Czech Benoni-type structure, uh, which we could have entered had he played the move d5, uh, if he'd played d5, I would have played d6 and after knight c3, e5 to enter the check Benoni, which I'm pretty confident in. Uh, I've worked on it for, for a while. So after c5, the most likely scenario is a Benoni-type structure. Uh, the best move is e3, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, because if black continues with queen b6, which is the best move, it's possible to play the move knight c3, banking on knight b5, therefore not really sacrificing the b2 pawn, even though it, the main line is to take, but it's not that scary. So queen takes b2, this line actually ends in the queen sacrifice for black. Let me try to remember it. Uh, okay, knight b5, uh, knight b5, knight d5, attacking the bishop, protecting c3. Uh, a3 trying to trap the queen, a6 chasing the bishop away, rook to b1, and queen to a2. And now queen c1 I think is the line, and a b5, rook a1, queen a1, queen a1, and knight c6, or take the bishop. I don't know. Okay, so th this is what happens after e3. It's not a forcing line, but this is the most likely uh, scenario. And then... One last move is dc5, uh, but after knight a6, queen d4, queen a5 check, uh, c3, queen takes, queen takes, knight takes. This position is perfectly equal. I have an extra central pawn, and this should be something like an improved Sicilian. And in his, uh, in his one game, in, in this line, when somebody had played c5, my opponent defended with c3. And this is now immediately better for black. It's not much better, but I think plus 0.5 or something like that. Why is that? Well, after the move queen b6, you can't play knight c3. Uh, therefore, you have to defend your b2 pawn. Therefore, you're in trouble because the only way to defend is with the queen. And immediately, black is slightly better. So I found a weakness in one of, in one of my opponent's games prepared for that specifically or try to enter that. I had a look at the other lines we could have entered, of course, but uh, this is one example where my principle to not stick to what I usually played, uh, play actually paid off. So I played queen b6, of course. In the one game uh, where he uh, played c3 against c5, his opponent took on d4, which is not good, just justifies the move c3. So queen b3 is the main defense. Uh, queen takes b3, a takes b3, 
And now c takes d4, of course, if he takes, he should be slightly worse. Should take my knight, so takes, takes, rook takes a7, takes on c3, and now uh, it's best to take with the knight, even though your pawn structure is ruined. I know it seems uh, counterintuitive, but that is the best move. You can't really afford to waste time here as white. He took with the b pawn, which I can understand. If I didn't know the position myself, I would probably have taken with the pawn too. And now I just went for quick development. g6, uh, he played g3. Uh, bishop g7, bishop g2, castles, e3, uh, d5, gaining central space and defending b7. Knight to e2, and bishop f5, castles. And this position uh, I didn't have on the board in my prep. I didn't go, go that deep, and I didn't look uh, at it with the engine. I'm going to turn on the engine now because I'm wondering about... Yeah, okay. Uh, so it's minus one for black, a bit more. And in this position, I, I, I made a mistake, which was... I don't know how to explain that. So I found a plan in this position, which doesn't really work, because I overlooked one thing that he could do. So I liked the idea of bringing my bishop to a6 uh, and trapping his rook. What I'd missed is that he can just play bishop f1, and that's that's a maneuver I've completely overlooked. So, had I seen bishop f1, I definitely would not have gone for bishop d3, bishop a6. Uh, okay, so that's one thing. Now, the thing I wanted to do was just go something like rook c8, and after, let's say, rook c1, go e5, expanding in the center. Uh, I'm guessing something like knight d2 would be played, and... I don't know. Now I would probably go bishop d3 and after bishop f1 uh, I would exchange or do something. I don't know, but I have a lot of pressure. So even if I do this, the, this position is quite hard for, for white to play. Instead of that, as I said, I went bishop d3. After rook e1 I went bishop a6 and knight f4. Uh, I, I saw that he's just going to play bishop f1 and I was really upset. I wasted a couple of moves and now I have to trade my, my good bishop off. Uh, e6, bishop f1, bishop takes, king takes. And this should still slightly be slightly better for black because he has a more prominent weakness than me. So I have a weak pawn on b7, he has a weak pawn on c3, which is hard to dissolve. And I have a bishop and a rook coming to target it, and a knight. Uh, but I don't think it's enough to be a winning advantage. Uh, so I did play knight e4. Uh, knight e2, he has to defend, rook fc8, again he has to defend rook c1. And now I decided to just go for it and try to target the weakness as best as I could. I didn't know if it was going to be enough. And after the game, uh, the most frustrating thing for me was that like, the principle of uh, having to have two weaknesses to win was really uh, obvious here. So he had a weakness, I, I tried to target it as best as I could. Uh, and eventually I didn't manage to weaken it enough, and he didn't have a second weaken, weakness I could exploit, so bear, bear that in mind. Rook c7, uh, of course he plays f3, if he doesn't I'll go rook bc8 and win the pawn, f3. Knight d6, transferring by knight to be able to go to b5, uh, fork uh, the rook and the pawn, and it all seems rosy for me, I, I, my weakness is not a weakness anymore, I, I'm putting pressure on his weakness, and my pawn structure is better, my rooks are more active, and all of that, but... Okay, king e1, rook bc8, king d2. Uh, here I played g5, which I think was a good move. If he allows g4, then I, I get the e4 square for my... So let's say he plays... What did he play next move? Let's say he plays rook a2, and I go uh, g4, and th this I think I could win now. So he should take, just take the pawn, and after knight e4, he is in big trouble now. Uh, the pawn is either going to be recovered or not. It doesn't really matter. My knight is a monster now, and I'm, I'm about to win the pawn. Okay. Uh, so after g5, of course, he is a very strong player. Played g4. Here I didn't really know what to do. I waited for him to show his cards, sort of. So I played h6, which is just a waiting move. It does nothing. Uh, he played rook to a2. Now I was happy because I, I realized he has no offensive ideas of his own at all, and he is probably going to defend for the rest of the game. So I went to rook c6, which is another waiting move, but it has 
uh, some venom to it. I may just play rook b6 uh, to target b3, or I may play rook a6, rook a8 if he decides to put his rook on c2, and I may try to control the a file. Here he went king d3, uh, I went king f8, trying to get my king to the center, knight d2, king e7, rook a to c2. And now I, uh, of course, after knight d2, his b3 pawn is defended, so I just went rook a6. And I'm taking over the a file. And here he really surprised me. I thought there is nothing he can do in this position. I thought he should just go, I don't know, knight b1, knight d2, knight b1, knight d2, maybe h3. Uh, and I thought that he's only break or his only uh, useful move here which is c4 is impossible well first of all why does he want to play c4 c3 is a weakness when he plays c4 the weakness doesn't exist anymore and we both have an isolated pawn on the b file which is a perfectly symmetrical pawn structure should be an equal game but why did i think c4 couldn't be played because after c4, dc4, uh, I'm opening up the d-file for this check, which can be very deadly uh, with my bishop on the h8, a1 diagonal. So if you imagine something checking the king, uh, at this point it would be checkmate. Uh, and I thought c4 is very scary. So I took dc, has to take with the knight, basically. Uh, if he takes with the pawn... He takes with the pawn this is uh, over i mean what, what does he do here he would have to either block his king and pin his knight or lose the c4 pawn so if he does this i can probably just uh wait what what, what do i do and maybe i can just do this i don't know i saw something uh it was two weeks ago so i don't remember everything precisely but i didn't think he could take with the knight with the pawn i'm sorry so after dc4 he has to take with the knight uh, I take, he takes with the pawn here, and now since he has a retreat square, I went for a rook to d6 check, because the king is cut off. And this seemed very dangerous for him, but I just couldn't see a way to finish this game off. When king e4, this is the only square. And now, of course, if, if the g4 pawn wasn't on the board, f5 check would be checkmate. Unfortunately, the g4 pawn is there. If I try h5, uh, he can go f4, giving himself an escape square on f3. Uh, he doesn't, of course, have to take. He can just go h3. So he has several ways to save the position. And then one tempo down. I, I, can't, I can't checkmate him. I need another move. So I threatened checkmate with rook c5, uh, which I thought was one of the best moves. And I thought, okay, rook c5 now threatens f5 checkmate. Uh, if he goes f3... I don't really mind that. Uh, I'm going to play f5 anyway, expand, force his king back, win a couple of pawns, probably. And also now I'm looking forward to moves like b5 after uh, after rook to c6 and winning the c4 pawn finally. And here he surprised me with knight d4. And knight d4 is a weird move uh, because it allows rook e5 check. And rook e5, of course, forces king d3. And after rook c5, I'm now threatening the move e5. And the only move he has in this position uh, is king uh, is king to c3 here. And after b5, which was my calculation, uh, king to b4, rook takes, rook takes, pawn takes, rook takes. This should be an equal position. This was my calculation. Uh, and I could do something like rook to a6, try to get behind. And... Probably I'm better, but I'm not much better. Uh, my bishop should be slightly worse than his knight, because all the pawns are on one side of the board, but my rook is way more active, and I get to trade my bishop off. In fact, I could have done it immediately had I wanted to. But in this position, after rook c5, uh, knight d4, rook e5, king d3, rook c5, he just went back to e4, king e4, and I repeated the position. I went rook e5 check, and we, and we repeated... I'm sorry, uh, once again, king e4, uh, check, king e3, rook c5, and, and we agreed to a draw, which I was happy about because it was the second game of the day. I'd won in the morning, I was tired. Uh, it was It's a good result because he's 250 points higher rated than me. But most of all, because I don't know how to win. So when he plays 
uh, king back to d3, what do I do? Or in this position, uh, when his king is on e4, what do I do? Again, uh, I have no idea. I'm going to turn on the engine now because I've, I, I don't know. So it says it's minus one, which I understand. Uh, f5, okay. I thought about f5, but what happens after knight, after knight takes? At some point so f5 i'm guessing pawn takes ah, okay i have an intermezzo chasing the king back okay or i can take the knight so okay here here and takes i assume yeah but i, I don't know uh i don't think i'm that much better i would definitely say this is not minus one or at least i don't know how to prove that it's minus one. His rooks are very active. I would say his knight is definitely better than my bishop. We have an equal number of weaknesses. I did consider f5, but... Uh, but yeah, I, I, I didn't think it was that strong. Are there any other moves? To be honest, I didn't consider anything else. Uh, I'd consider taking the, taking the knight briefly and then playing f5. I didn't think that works either takes takes f5 yeah i mean pr probably just doesn't work yeah this should be equal so i wasn't really sure and uh i don't remember the time situation i think we had i think i had 20 minutes half an hour probably enough i wasn't in time trouble but since i just couldn't see what to do i i decided to go for a draw yeah, okay, uh, so let me know what you think about the game, let me know what you think about my preparation method to try to play against my opponent's weaknesses. Uh, I think that's much better than just sticking to what I play usually, and it also forces me to learn a lot of new stuff. Obviously, I've never played the early C5 against the London system, so that, that feels good. And the best thing is my opponents have no idea what I'm going to play against them, because I'm just going to play what they are worst at, and if they don't know it, then they don't know what I'm going to play. Okay, uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.